Issues of national development and cohesiveness dominate discussions at party fora and youth summits across the country. The People's Democratic Party close ranks to douse the fires of discord bedeviling the party. The All Progressives Grand Alliance uh, says there's light at the end of the tunnel for its flag bearer as the November 6th Anambra governorship election draws ever closer. Fractures issues in the APC ward congresses to be addressed as wards, appeals, committees are inaugurated. Also on political update today, the Nigerian army describes the nation's youths as partners in progress. Stay with us for details of these and other political tidbits across the nation. I'm Fisayo Gunfui. Welcome. The enlarged meeting of the People's Democratic Party has ended in Abuja with the resolve to convene a National Executive Committee meeting of the party within the next weeks, where all issues in contention are expected to be addressed. This Tuesday morning witnessed continuation of protest for and against the National Chairman of the PDP, Prince Uche Secondos. This continuation of reconciliation meeting is at the instance of the PDP Board of Trustees with the 13 governors of the party as well as National Working Committee members. Nothing will be difficult to resolve and we are on the pathway to bring Nigeria good news of peace that will reign in this party. We should put away all our in personal interest base. National Assembly leadership of the party promised to continue to be on the part of what will entrench peace and unity in the party. Chairman of the PDP Governors Forum and Governor of Sokoto State, Aminu Waziri Tambual, thereafter relates the resolution of the meeting. We are committed to resolving all the issues we have and you will soon hear from us what our own views and position as your children as people that you have facilitated and helped to put in office, not your financiers, are going to see. Governor Godwin Obaseki of Edo State, who chairs the party's National E-Registration Committee, earlier briefed the larger house of the successes so far recorded in the exercise. It looks like stakeholders of the People's Democratic Party may have succeeded in saving the party's national chairman, Prince Uche Sukundus, from impeachment or resignation from office. However, major takeaways from the fence mending meeting is that the tenure of office of the Sukundus led party executives will end in October rather than November 2021. Having fended off the renewed crisis that threatened to repeat apart few months to its national convention, the People's Democratic Party resolved to retain its national chairman, Prince Uche Secondus, in office till October when a new national convention will be held. And the early convention should be held latest by the end of October. Also, that the, national, the zoning committee for the party position should also be constituted by the same National Executive Committee to be held immediately. So we thank members of the party for holding out, for your prayers, for your support, and well-meaning Nigerians who have been waiting patiently for the resolution of these issues. You can see the chairman of the BOT is here, you can see all the governors are here, and you can see the national chairman of our party is here. To God be the glory. The meeting convened at the instance of the Board of Trustees of the main opposition party, with all of its 13 governors mandating the party national chairman to immediately summon a meeting of the National Executive Committee, NEC, which will constitute the National Convention Planning Committee, as well as Party Offices Zoning Committee. And that NEC will be convened by the chairman of the party, who is constitutionally endowed to do so. Apart from the presidency, the zoning committee is also to decide the region to produce the next party chairman, which may determine whether seconders can recontest the position or not. We'll be watching this space for more development from the PDP. Now the national chairman of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, APCA, Victor Oye, has uh, 
described the appeal court judgment that declared former Central Bank Governor Professor Chukuma Charles Soludo as the party's flag bearer ahead of the November 6th governorship election in Anambra State as having the foot of justice. I want to use this opportunity to call an INEC to do the needful without further delay by replacing the name of the name there by court order and put the rightful candidate there. The court has affirmed the leadership under me, affirmed Soludo as the candidate of the party. So I wish to appeal to every party, every Nigerian, to have everything the way they approach politics. Remove violence, remove greed, remove malfeasance, and let's work together for the good of our country. All right, so the center of discourse today, what should be the role of Nigerian youths in building a nation of their dreams? This is the focus of the Nigerian Youth Summit held in commemoration of the International Youth Day this week. Estimated that youths make up 60% of the Nigerian population. Available data show that out of this figure, 13.9 million youths are unemployed. Experts say the situation is a recipe for insecurity and poverty. Channeling this youth population towards development of the nation is the reason for this gathering. We are calling on Nigerian youth to involve themselves more in agriculture. And we're also asking government to give an enabling ground where Nigerian youth will see agriculture as a viable cause, as a viable business, the way people are going to oil and gas. For us to achieve that dream, we have to de-emphasize our fault lines. What are the fault lines? Ethnicity, religion. The gathering identified gaps in skills and entrepreneurship development in the country but urged youths to seek self-development. The era where youth should begin to hope and desiring and hope and be waiting for government to provide job is over. It is time for the youth to begin to create an initiative to create employment. And we have too many people who graduate from school without employment. So we need to begin to build young people to understand the value of skills. Those who have talent, God-given talent, how can we develop them? Key players in youth development further advised youths to remain patriotic and committed to issues that enhance security and corporate existence of Nigeria. Dr. Gaba Omar uh, is of the Buari Youth Organization. He joins us now to discuss current realities confronting the Nigerian youth in the quest to fulfill potential and contribute meaningfully to nation building. Thank you, Thank you for joining us. Thank now, let, let's start this way. We've had, you know, party well, controversies and all that. But somehow in the center are youths. You come, you know, especially when it comes to when we are seeing the timelines, the dates and elections are on, you know, around the corner. You, you, you see a lot of youths being galvanized to action, promises made in terms of, uh, you know, employment, especially at the state and local government levels. And then after that, we we'll wait again for another cycle. Uh, what are you doing, especially uh, after our last conversation, you know, to bridge the gap in terms of, you know, the discourse and as well as the actuality in making sure that, uh, uh, you know, the youth are properly captured and uh, we have more path to, you know, the top. Thank you very much. Uh, this is one of the problems we've been trying to address. Though uh, this government has, has, has uh, tried a lot to see how they can uh, capture the youth in the whole process of the governance. But uh, this problem has been there for long. When it comes to politics, uh, the youth are, are, are the tools to be used. You, you, you have seen it clearly. The youth form the 60% of the population of the country. And likewise, we are the voting powers. Apart from that, not only the voting alone, in the campaign and everything, not only in politics, youths are the driving force of this country. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Whatever you do, you can't do without the youths. But at the end of the day, there is this problem of a uh, uh, use and dump policy. Though we have seen a lot and we are trying to see how we can amend these problems. This government came up with a lot of policies, like the NICEL, like the CBN, like all this COVID, uh, small and medium skin loan. Also. There are a lot of 
problems of enlightenment. They are not, most of the youths are not enlightened about all this. There are a lot of this grand hanging. Nobody came to claim them. Well, you that. see that a lot of these people that are repeatedly going there is the same set of people. So, honestly speaking, there is a gap of communication between the youths and the national leadership and the government. Uh, we have to use our own time to create at least a medium of communication between the national and then the local level. Most of these youths that are in, the, in these localities don't even know about all this. Despite there is this social media today that goes everywhere very viral. But the youths mostly take their time on things that are mostly politics. All these youth empowerment skills, youth empowerment grants from the governments, nobody cared to look at them and assess them. And then the ministries, they don't care to publicize all this. They don't, because to their own advantage, if they didn't publicize it well, they may end up giving to those who, they, they are favorites only. So this is the problem we're having. But I'm telling you, every day there is an enlightenment going on. If you look at it, the political theory has gone down drastically. From 2015 to today, the issue of political theory has gone down drastically more than 60 percent because of the enlightenment. We have offices, we have coordinators in 774 local governments. If you look at it, gone are the days when youth would just take a bow and arrow, cutlass to go and fight for politics. No. Today, it is a campaign for mindset. If you look at it, most of the campaigns is social media now. If you don't have to want to contribute, nobody will even follow you on social media to know what you are doing. So we have been trying our best to see how we can sensitize this youth, how we can enlighten them, how we can bring them to the limelight to know that gone are the days when we go into politics with Togri. When we go into politics blindly, no, we don't do that. Most of the coordinators, particularly of this particular organization, the Buari organization, they are graduates. I can tell you these 774 local government coordinators we have, None of them is less than that. They are all graduates. The reason is, without this, you can't achieve what you want to achieve. It is an organization uh, that is formed. Let, know, let to, me, yes. Yeah, let me come in very quickly. Mm. Uh, and this has been the argument of many uh, of the young ones at this time, that our founding fathers, when you look at them, and when they took bold decisions to, uh, you know, um, position the destination of state in their time. They, some, most of them were in their 30s. Some of them were in, even in their 20s, you know, when they were taking key decisions that affected Nigeria as a state. Now we come to, you know, this generation. At that time, I mean, at this point, they are still being seen as political toddlers and not particularly given much opportunities uh, to, in spite of, you know, the, the law, not to you to run. Is there a clear path? for instance, for responsibility, for, you know, uh, youths to be able to even exhibit a bit of their leadership qualities, especially putting against the backdrop uh, of uh, what some of these, the parties have done, the main party, ruling party, the war congresses and all that. Have, they, have there been a deliberate effort to capture, you know, the younger minds in terms of setting us as, as a country for, you know, uh, you know future leadership roles? Yeah, well? you, you are right. You said something. Not most of. In fact, this country, the people that built this country, they did that when they were youth, when they were very energetic to do it. And you can't give what you don't have. There are some decisions that you can't take when you reach a certain age. We don't say that uh, the leaders should bucket everything and give it to the youth. We need leaders that will guide us. But. The driving force, as I was saying initially, are the youths. And you can't keep the driving force away and think things will move all right. It can be possible. So definitely sure what you can give at your early age. You can't give it at the later age. So the need for the youth to come into this uh, mainstream of leadership is, is very, very important. Without the youth, we can't do anything. There are so many people that are on the seat of power today, they cannot take decisions. So many of them. And we cannot just come out today and say we need somebody less than 30 or less than 40 to come and rule this country. Definitely sure we need somebody as a partner that will rule this country. But there are other offices that needed to be occupied by these people that have the energy to go around, that have the energy to supervise, that have the energy to implement. 
not somebody that will just appoint as a minister for six months to remain in the office without any initiative. Six months without supervision, six months without any achievement. There are so many of them. All right, let's, let's, uh, let's uh, you know, um, move on very quickly and because we have a, a few other things to talk about since, uh, you know, this is against the backdrop of the World Youth Day and, you know, African populations and uh, the research about, you know, uh, more engagement to the youth, especially because of the population of the youth. But let's uh, quickly take some, you know, uh, stories from the parties. Uh, again, the All Progressives Congress has inaugurated wards, appeals, uh, committees for the parties uh, just uh, concluded uh, ward elections. Uh, let's uh, take that report and then we'll be back. The All Progressives Congress is expected to conduct four congresses from wards, local governments, states, and the National Convention, having concluded the World Congresses as a first step. These committees are expected to perform an important post-World Congresses role of hearing all matters arising from the exercise. National Secretary of the Kiatika Committee, John James Akpaudwedehe, urged members of the committees to follow the party's rules in discharging their task. This party is for all Nigerians. Therefore, we must show, not only by words, but by concrete actions, that there is no attempt to exclude or sideline anyone in the course of this exercise. This is very fun fundamental to the preservation of the very excellence of the party. Your action in this wise will help engender cohesion, build trust and confidence in this all-important exercise. Talking about milestones and achievements, the All Progressives Congress Legacy Awareness and Campaign Group says the Buhari administration has continued to demonstrate unprecedented commitment to the renewal and expansion of the country's infrastructure stock across the vital areas of the economy. The group's national coordinators, Salih Mohamed Lukman, Director General APC Governors Forum, and Ismail Ahmed, National Youth Leader APC Kiteka Committee, in a statement said, since 2016, 12 dams have been completed by the Buhari administration spread across 11 states, including Kashimbila Multipurpose Dam in Taraba State, Ogwashi Oku Multipurpose Dam in Delta State, Adada Dam in Enugu, Sulman F Dam, Katsina, Gimi F. Dam, Kadura, Amla Otupo Dam, Binwe, Amauzari F. Dam, Imo, Ibiono Ibom F. Dam, Akwaibon, Gadao Lafia Zigao Dam, Bauchi, Alajuesmo F. Dam, Oshu, Rehabilitated Kampi Umi Dam, and Cargo Dam in Kogi and Kaduna State. This is in addition to 8 dam projects, 8 hydropower projects, 16 irrigation projects and 11 water supply projects scheduled for completion by 2023. The APC Legacy Awareness Group agreed that the positive effects of these investments, which are starting to be seen and felt across the country, will continue to increase in intensity, lay foundation for new jobs, for the revival of local communities, to boost agriculture and support industrialization for lasting growth and economic development. All right, uh, we still have uh, uh, National Secretary Buhari Youth Organization right here with us. And this time, you're an engineer. We go to uh, talking a bit about infrastructure development. Uh, what we have seen, especially in some of these projects, is the fact that there's been huge gap uh, between administrations. Some will start, won't finish. Some will refuse to complete what others started. Uh, and that has led to a lot of gap uh, that now we are trying to plug the holes and eventually bring many more urban institutions back uh, on, on track. How do we sustain this? Uh, because when you talk of infrastructure development, it doesn't end. It goes beyond governments. Mm. That's the or tenures. Yeah, that's the major problem we have. The issue of uh, governance is different, entirely different. And the issue of politics is different. If my predecessor is building something like infrastructure that will move the country forward, I see no reason why, because of politics, I will come and make sure abandon that project. I think it is for the benefit of all, not for the benefit of only me or somebody in my party. So honestly speaking, we've been having this country from the inception of this country, we've been having this problem. You see a lot of projects today of 1983 lying down without completion, simply because of politics. 
And our leaders are supposed to know that Nigeria is bigger than the political party. Without this country, we can't do anything. So definitely sure, it's, it's like we're wasting the resources of, this, uh, uh, of our country to start a project because of politics and other government will come and abandon it. So I think it, it, it is not a good idea. It is a very bad idea. And I think uh, every government that's supposed to forward a project, it must be contained in the budget. And for every budget, you have a stipulated time for every project when you start it. You can't start a project without a plan, without a design. From your design, you have your bill of quantity that will tell you the, 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 the idea of the financial, uh, financial implications you need. And then you have the time frame. So you cannot just enter into a project blindly. So I see no reason why you start a project which you have all the plan on ground, you have the financial plan, you have the time frame and everything. And then at the end of the day, you, you can complete this project through your tenure. I, I, I don't think uh, it, it, it is... And for projects that may outlast 10 years, there's nothing, uh, you know, stopping future governments from continuing very quickly, as we've seen uh, even in some of our uh, rail and road projects as you well. You see, whether we like it and or not, I think our field of uh, specialization matters a lot in our uh, actions in, in, in governance. The, you can't put a square five in, 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 in a round hole, I think, to have a result. So most of these people... They are just uh, they are just convinced by other people to take a project. It is not their own initiative. If I initiate a project today, forget about being an engineer. Even a layman, if you initiate a project today, you know what you have on ground. You must have the idea how much do you need. You must have the idea how uh, uh, how long the duration of this project you need. So definitely, sure, most of these people, the projects they take upon themselves are other people's idea. And once somebody or a company needed a project, they can give you any time frame. So I think it is a very good idea whenever we want to assign a role or we want to assign anything to anybody, let it be the person is of that particular field. But you can't bring somebody that is a layman and ask him to perform. It can be possible. All right, let's, before I let you go, uh, you are of the younger generation. You are also dabbling into political, uh, you know, the terrain. You want to, you know, aspire into one position or the other. And you, how would you uh, advise, you know, the young ones now who are trying to take up, you know, perhaps, perhaps a career in politics as well? Uh, because everybody is saying it's a, a, an issue of money bags and all that. But how can a youth begin to start, you know, being I, a I advise the youth to come out and uh, not only to join the politics and participate, and not only participation alone, to contest. We can't sit down and be talking of uh, not to run to run bill, sitting at home thinking somebody will call you and appoint you a governor or a senator or a rep. It can't be possible. You must participate actively. And we should forget about that money issue. Money doesn't work. The Are every you sure? day, every day, the level of enlightenment is growing by the day. Every day, I'm telling you. We still saw uh, bags of rice and salt last year. Forget about that one. So many people think they can use money to manipulate. If it works before, I think next time it wouldn't work. So it is time for us to start, Buhari. The president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria contested a lot three times. Later, he won two times. Some say that is politics. Some say collect the bag, but still vote your conscience. That is it. It's all right. That's how we end the program today. Our um, political update. We hope you have, you've had uh, you know a uh, swell time. Last uh, the last program we're talking about uh, PDP, of course, and uh, uh, you know getting out of uh, uh, some of the push and pull that we've had in the past. We'll be give, watching the space to give you that, and of course uh, the APC Appeals Committee will uh, get their findings. Abga, of course, still in the news. Uh, next week we will come to you with a better, brighter. Package. My name is Fisao Gufi. Thanking you for staying tuned. Uh, urging you to stay with the Nigerian Television Authority, Africa's finest, largest, and best, where we give you the very best of us political news, reviews, previews, and interviews. Bye bye now.